The best part of the NFL Draft is the immediate excitement that engulfs each fan base as it dreams of what their future might bring. That said, the impact of finding a true draft steal feels even greater than the initial buzz. Over the past decade, Super Bowl runs and some of the best moments in NFL history have been provided by players who could be described as steals in the draft. Expectations are always high for first and second round picks. These players had major exposure in college and they were scrutinized for months, if not years, prior to the draft. Players taken in the third round and later generally carry much lower expectations as they embark on their professional careers. With the 2023 NFL Draft less than two months away, we're looking back on the past decade to find the 10 biggest draft steals. Players taken in the first two rounds are excluded from this list, since it's harder to qualify them as steals. As impressive as it is for former second rounders like Bobby Wagner and Levante David to emerge as Hall of Fame candidates, the players we've identified below took unlikelier paths to success. These steals have made a major mark on the NFL through elite production and timely, jaw-dropping plays. We'll dig into each of the top 10 draft steals and even have an honorable mention for those just outside the list. The combination of longevity, peak performance, original draft position, and overall impact on the league play into where each star lands. Above average quarterbacks found outside of the first round have the advantage, but all pro nods and Super Bowl MVP winners aren't far behind. We'll also factor in positional importance and how each individual changed how their team operated thanks to their emergence. Each player is listed with the team that originally drafted them, not their current team if they found a new home. Starting things off at number 10, we have George Kittle, tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. He was picked number 146 in the 2017 NFL. NFL draft. There are so few tight ends who have proved to be reliably unguardable that it may be the position with the largest gap between the good starters and average starters. George Kittle has been a major part of the position's development since being drafted in the fifth round in 2017. The athletic 6'4", 250-pounder has only been slowed by injuries since his rookie season. Kittle's ability to create after the catch is especially notable for a big man. In 2021, Kittle ranked second among tight ends in yards after catch. Despite missing three games, his presence forces defenses to react to his alignment and defenders must follow his movements thanks to San Francisco's desire to feed him targets. After Kittle's emergence in 2018, when his 1,377 receiving yards set the all-time record for receiving yards by a tight end, a number then eclipsed in 2020 by Travis Kelsey, we saw heavier investments into receiving tight ends like Mike Gusecki, David Njoku, TJ Hawkinson, Noah Fant, and Kyle Pitts. The value of a star at the position is immense, but high production, standout tight ends are still fairly rare commodities. Kittle, as a day three pick, is easily a top steal considering how the position is now valued. Number nine, Fred Warner, linebacker, San Francisco 49ers. Warner was picked number 70 in the 2018 NFL Draft. From Navarro Bowman and Patrick Willis to Reuben Foster, the 49ers have done well replacing some of the most dynamic linebackers in the NFL. Their latest superstar at the position has been Fred Warner. A mere third round pick out of BYU, Warner has been incredibly productive since hitting the field, totaling 504 tackles and two All-Pro distinctions over five seasons. The 26-year-old is one of the standards for new school linebackers. Warner is as comfortable turning his back on the quarterback in coverage as he is running downhill into the trenches. His confidence and consistency unlocked more possibilities for his defensive coordinators than what the vast majority of teams can afford to try. The 49ers didn't hesitate to extend Warner as soon as they could, rewarding him with a five-year $95 million deal. His play and then extension have cemented him as one of the cornerstones of the franchise's defense alongside Nick Bosa. In hindsight, Warner would have easily cost the team a high first round pick if the 2018 draft were to be redone. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this next one, but coming in at number eight, we have Kirk Cousins, quarterback drafted by the Washington Commanders. Cousins was picked number 102 in the 2012 NFL Draft. Drafted to be RG3's backup and little else, who would have thought Kirk Cousins would be 10 years into his career with over 37,000 passes yards, 252 touchdowns, and just 105 interceptions on his resume. Cousins has his faults and is the poster boy for being good, but not impactful enough to get his teams into the Super Bowl mix. But he's also been efficient and consistent throughout his career. For being a fourth round pick, he's been a marvelous return on the investment. His stint with Washington led to an ugly separation after the two sides couldn't come to terms on a multi-year extension. Both he and the team had justified reasons for their disinterest in continuing long term, but Washington was never able to replace Cousins with someone better. 
better. Since Cousins signed in Minnesota, he's been even better statistically than he was in Washington. Bad luck has hurt Cousins' ability to win in the playoffs on top of his own ill-timed turnovers and bad decisions. The best team he's ever been on, the 2019 Vikings, ran into the buzzsaw that was the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs. Cousins didn't play well, but Dalvin Cook also totaled 18 yards and the defense was picked apart by Tevin Coleman. Could Cousins have pushed the 49ers to a Super Bowl had he signed with them instead of Minnesota in 2018? He's a better version of Jimmy Garoppolo in my eyes. Unfortunately, we may never see Cousins on a better than mediocre team as his career enters its twilight years. Number 7. Tyran Matthew, safety, drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. He was pick number 69 in the 2013 NFL Draft. The Honey Badger was one of the most memorable and impactful defensive players in college football during the 2010s. His energy was infectious for LSU and he was an obvious first round talent on the field. However, he had some off the field related drug issues. But the Arizona Cardinals wisely snapped Tyron Matthew as the 17th defensive back drafted in the 2013 class. He immediately made an impact as a versatile presence who was lightning quick to find the football. Matthew earned all pro status in his third season and appeared set for a long dominant career. Unfortunately, a torn ACL in 2015 essentially doomed the rest of his tenure in Arizona. He lost some of his explosiveness and was exposed in coverage more than ever. Matthew had a nice bounce back season in Houston in 2018 before he fully regained his form in Kansas City in 2019. Regardless of what's next for Matthew, he served as the face of three different defenses already. He helped the Chiefs win a Super Bowl in 2020 and remains one of the most unique talents in the NFL. Number 6. Cooper Cup, wide receiver, drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. Cup was picked number 69 in the 2017 NFL Draft. Prior to the 2021 season, Cooper Cup had established himself as a premier slot receiver who could give defenses headaches on critical plays. He was solid but seemed to be capped in his role. After accumulating 3,570 yards in his first four years, he broke out for almost 2,000 yards and 16 touchdowns on 145 catches in a monster 2021 season. It was his first season with more than 94 receptions and just his second 1,000 yard season. His prior limited outputs were partially due to injuries as he missed eight games in 2018 and one game in 2020. Regardless, Cup's dominance was undeniable as he played a massive role in Los Angeles' Super Bowl run through this past season's playoffs too. The 6'2", 208-pounder has a devastating blend of deep speed, agility on sharp cuts, and incredible toughness through contact. He's a magician with the ball in his hands, and he seemingly never drops the ball on key plays. There's no question the 2021 AP Offensive Player of the Year and Super Bowl MVP was a massive third round steal considering his resume. Number 5. David Bakhtiari, Offensive Tackle, drafted by the Green Bay Packers. Bakhtiari was picked number 109 in the 2013 NFL Draft. A true cornerstone blocker over the past 9 years, David Bakhtiari has enjoyed one of the highest peaks possible for an offensive tackle. Aaron Rodgers' blindside protector entered the league as a 4th round selection and the fact he turned into a 3-time Pro Bowler and 2-time All-Pro member has been a godsend for the Green Bay Packers. Bakhtiari was known for his elite pass blocking and durability up until the end of 2020 when he suffered a torn ACL. He missed all but one game in 2021 because of a nightmare knee injury, but he plans to be back to full strength in 2023. Prior to this injury, he missed just six games in seven seasons. Getting back Diari back to his prime form will be imperative for the Packers to reach their own peak in 2023. Just 31 years old, only health can slow Bakhtiari's reign as one of the elite left tackles in the NFL. Either way, he's proved himself to be an immensely valuable steal. Number four, Stefan Diggs, wide receiver, drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. Diggs was picked number 146 in the 2014 NFL Draft. Known as a high-caliber high school recruit who opted for a struggling Maryland program, Stefan Diggs was a difficult prospect to bank on in the 2015 class. He had obvious quickness and great athleticism, but he struggled with injuries and dealt with horrible quarterback play at Maryland. A better situation may have helped Diggs land where he clearly belonged in hindsight, the first round. Of course, Diggs had more tough luck as he landed with a struggling Vikings offense until the team acquired Kirk Cousins. His 2017 season with Case Keenum was promising as he reached 849 yards and 8 touchdowns, but since 2018, Diggs has been paired with much better passers and his productivity has exploded. He's peaked over the past three seasons with Buffalo. The Bills' high volume passing game has led to 164 targets in 2021 and 154 targets this past season in 2022. In three seasons total with the Bills, he's got over 4,100 receiving yards and 29 touchdowns. 
touchdowns. He's been a huge reason the Bills are seen as year in, year out Super Bowl contenders. The league has shifted to quicker than fast receivers who win off the line of scrimmage, in part because of how easy Diggs makes things for his quarterback. He'd be guaranteed top five pick in almost any draft class if teams knew what he'd become. Number three, Tyree Kill, wide receiver, Kansas City Chiefs. Hill was picked number 165 in the 2016 NFL Draft. Most of the players on this list fell down draft boards because they were undersized or had subpar athletic measurables. However, it is well documented Tyree Kill slipped to the fifth round after Oklahoma State kicked him off the team due to character concerns and legal issues. On the field, however, Hill has been one of the best picks over the last decade, as he's made the Pro Bowl in every season he's been in the NFL. He had a career year in 2018, totaling over 1,600 yards from scrimmage on just 109 touches. He dealt with a shoulder issue in 2019, but he still racked up 883 yards in 12 games and helped the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Then in 2022, after going to the Miami Dolphins, Hill had his best year yet with over 1,700 receiving yards and scoring seven touchdowns. Hill isn't the NFL's most complete receiver, but he is one of the fastest. He is the perfect receiver to pair with any quarterback. Some may argue he's the best wide receiver in football, and you'd have to make a strong case against that as Hill is a dynamic playmaker that changes the fabric of every game he plays in. Look for Tyree Kill to continue to be among the best receivers in the AFC for the next several seasons. Number two, Dak Prescott, quarterback, Dallas Cowboys. Prescott was picked number 135 in the 2016 NFL Draft. Finding a quality long-term starting quarterback beyond the first round has become almost impossible. For all of the first round busts we can name, the only opening day starters who weren't first rounders from the past decade were Kirk Cousin, Jimmy Garoppolo, Derek Carr, Jalen Hurts, and Dak Prescott. Garoppolo, Carr, and Hurts were all second round picks. The concept of a developmental quarterback is too idealistic for the NFL's reality. The short windows to win rob talented but raw passers of long-term developmental opportunities. Plus, the draft has long been the only avenue for teams to acquire a star passer, so it's a worthwhile gamble to select a quarterback even if there are legitimate concerns about them. Prescott is the most recent exception to the established thought that quarterbacks selected beyond the second round are set for a backup's career. Taken in the fourth round as an experienced collegiate quarterback who really found his footing as a senior, Prescott grabbed the chance to be the Cowboys' long-term answer as soon as Tony Romo was injured during a preseason game. Romo was able to return by the end of the year, but Dallas decided the rookie was the better option. He's a two-time Pro Bowl and is only improving his game. In 2021, he threw a career-high 37 touchdowns and added one on the ground. He boosted his yards per attempt to 8.2 and had a QB rating of 104.2. For all the crap he gets due to the Cowboys' postseason struggles, Dak has still proved to be a steal when you consider where he was taken, and maybe, just maybe, he hasn't reached his full potential yet. His five years with the Cowboys have featured some highs and lows. Early, he was part of an incredibly talented unit and orchestrated the offense as a game manager. Over the past two years, Prescott has blocked blossomed as a passer despite a major injury in 2020, and he has cemented himself as, at worst, an above-average quarterback. Number 1. Russell Wilson quarterback drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. Wilson was picked number 75 in the 2012 NFL Draft. Russell Wilson is forever destined to be a headliner in any NFL Draft Steals article. The former third rounder quickly dispelled doubters as the Seattle Seahawks ripped off five straight seasons with double-digit wins with Wilson under center, including a Super Bowl victory in 2014. He amassed a 104-53-1 record in 10 seasons in Seattle, which is made more impressive by the fact he only missed two games despite pre-draft concerns about his 5'11", 215-pound frame. The nine-time Pro Bowler's performances throughout the years established him as one of the most dynamic, explosive, and reliable playmakers at the position. Few quarterbacks in league history can boast Wilson's blend of accuracy, downfield throwing ability, and escapability from the pocket. His impact goes even beyond the Seahawks. Seeing a short, thick-bodied quarterback reach such success opened the door for other smaller quarterbacks, notably Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, and two who were all first round picks despite lacking traditionally ideal measurements. Now with the Denver Broncos for the next phase of his career, it's simply hilarious that teams missed on Wilson after an incredible collegiate career at North Carolina State and Wisconsin. He started four years in college, averaged 7.9 yards per passing attempt, and tested as an elite athlete in combine drills. What lies ahead will only further cement Wilson's legacy as an era-defining presence. So guys, if you made it this far in the video, I just want to thank you. These videos do take a long time to make and a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. It's free and doesn't cost you anything. With a list like this and so many players to choose from, odds are I miss some people. So let me know in the comments down below which draft steal I missed and why they were a draft steal. Thanks for watching as always guys. Later.